produced in association with the NBC Television Network. William Bendix in The Life of Riley. With Marjorie Reynolds as Peg, Tom DeAndre as Gillis, Wes Morgan as Junior, and Gloria Blondell as Honeybee. Produced by Tom McKnight. If I had to tell someone the most important thing about a Medicare supplement, it's to think about what's important to you and what are you looking for in your coverage. Whether that's having a plan that covers absolutely everything or something less expensive with more out-of-pocket expenses. Know what's important to you so you can tell your agent and they can find the plan that's best for you. keynote of our fabulous country. Wall Street with its daily transactions. The Chicago grain market where fortunes are made and lost. Broadway's electric signs that spell out big business and varied products. Television center. Baseball. Football. Boxing. All under the head of big business. And so today, it is only natural to find our own Chester A. Riley soberly contemplating a gigantic deal. 85 bucks, and that's my final bid. 85 clams for a growing concern? It's a shame you even mentioned it, pal. I ain't seen a customer since I've been here. See that bus over there? Yeah. Every time a bus stops, they stampede the joint. Keeps the cash register ringing, huh? Ah, oh, you'll be playing it like a typewriter. <laughs> uh, push the wrong key. Well, that's what I'm looking for. A business of my own that'll keep my family in luck. This is it, Mac. And for 150 clams, it's all yours. Only got a little over 100. Sold to the man with a little over 100. Good dinner, Peg. I'm stuffed up to here. Oh, I'm glad you liked it, dear. Babs and I worked hard all afternoon. Uh, more coffee, dear? Yes, you can uh, pour me another demi Tessie. Would you like another piece of pie, Daddy? No, thanks. I'm cutting down to three slices. <laughs> Holy smoke! Why don't you start smoking stinkers? <laughs> Junior, this happens to be a genuine ten-cent Green Goblin Havana Perfecto. <laughs> Fell at the hamburger. I, I, I mean, the plant gave it to me. Speaking of the plant, dear, haven't you forgotten something? Nothing I can think of. It's Friday, Daddy. So what? Kick in. <laughs> you got paid today, didn't you, dear? Oh, oh that. <laughs> Peg? How would you like to have another car in the garage just for taking trips on Sunday? I'll try to bear up with only one. Where are your wages, dear? A two-story home in Beverly Hills with a swimming pool. Riley. Servants to wait on your hands and feet. Mink bedspreads. <laughs> two slippers of champagne every night. Did something drop on your head at the plant, Pop? No, oh, my head's as clear as a pumpkin and clicking finances. You did something with your pay, and you might as well tell me. All right, I will. I done something that'll put us all on Easy Street. I bought a business. Right. No. Here we go. I bought a flourishing hamburger stand. Right, you didn't. Oh, Daddy, no. Oh, boy. I'll run at nights, Saturdays, and Sundays, and when the dough really starts rolling in, I'll quit at the plant. Riley, do you mean you threw your wages into the gutter again just when we need every penny of it? Now, just a minute, Peg. I done a lot of thinking before I threw it in the gutter. I mean, I, uh, I didn't rush into this without my brain. Oh, Riley, how could you? For 20 years, I've been slaving over hot rivets. And what have I got to show for it? You've got Junior and me. You ain't assets. Why ain't I rich? I'm asking you, Peg. Why ain't you wearing diamonds and furs? Is it because I'm lazy? Is it because I ain't got push? Is it because I'm lacking in brains? <laughs> 
You go into the other room, children. I want to answer your father. <laughs> Go ahead, ignore me. You'll be pampering at me when the money starts rolling in. Oh, but, Daddy, a hamburger stand. And what's wrong with a hamburger stand? All my life I've been plugging along. Work hard, they say. Keep your nose to the gridiron, they say. And you'll find the rainbow with a pot of gold. Have I got a rainbow? You got the pot. <laughs> Don't infuriate me, Junior. Just where is this gold mine? On the empty lot at 3rd and Maple. Gee, Pop, there's another hamburger stand right across the street. There was another one. The one I bought ran them right out of business. Peg, I got the fixtures and the whole works for a little over a hundred bucks. You certainly got the works. You didn't have a little over a hundred dollars. Where did you get the extra money? Oh, I... I got an executive head. I know. I asked you where you got the money. I'd done what any other businessman will do. I borrowed it from a bank. A bank lent you money without any security? Well, not exactly. It, it was, uh, it's a kind of a, well, uh, it's a sort of a, it's a partnership. The First National Bank went into partnership with you on a hamburger stand? Who said anything about the First National Bank? There are other banks, you know. Holy smoke! I have 25 bucks in my piggy bank. Shake, partner. We'll fill up a hundred piggy banks. Broke again. Hey, uh, Junior. How does that look? Pretty snazzy, huh? I don't think incorporate is spelled right. Never mind the spelling. It's the sentiment that counts. Chester A. Riley and Son. Look out, Pop! You're in a paint. For two cents, I'd climb back up that ladder and incorporate you right out of the business. Would you give me back my 25 bucks? Get your equipment and go on down the street. Okay, Pop. Lacoste, Ryle, you're in danger in life and limb. Huh? Put oh. that down. You got everything? Ten pounds of popcorn, 15 pounds of hot dogs, and 45 pounds of hamburger. They don't sell this much at the World Series. I know what I'm doing. I don't think you put that much popcorn in all at once, Ryle. I'm getting ready for the moving picture trade when the theater opens. Hey, Ryle. Uh, you've got one yellow shoe and one black. That ain't gonna look very appetizing to the customers. I'm selling hamburgers, not shoes. Wait till this cash register starts ringing. <laughs> That's got more firepower than a bazooka. Two loges, please. Oh, Babs. I must have left my money in my other purse. Oh, I haven't any money either. Well, we'll get some from your father. Sorry. Mom, look! Get them while they're red hot. Riley's burgers from Happy Cows. <laughs> Junior, how could you? It's our advertising campaign. Well, you advertise yourself right back to that stand. But March. March. Well, it takes care of that. Get your hamburgers from a reliable firm. Treat your stomach right at Riley's. Step. Oh, hold up, Peg. Chester Riley, what do you mean sending your son out as a sandwich man? Take that thing off at once. But Peg, advertising is the life of trade. I suppose you'd like Babs and me to go to the movies with signs on our back. Gee, would you, Peg? Daddy, don't be silly. 
When we got to the movies, I found I didn't have a cent in my purse. Well, that's the trouble with you women. You got no head for finances. Well, I like that. <laughs> well, as long as we're here, Mom, we might as well have lunch. <clears throat> Two hamburgers coming up. Now, just a minute, Peg. I don't like to bring this up, but I hope you got the money to pay for the hamburgers. Well, I just told you, I don't have a cent. Oh, well, then I'm very sorry. You see, me and Junior, we got a motto. Yeah. Oh, don't be ridiculous. We're your wife and daughter. Yeah, I know. That's the reason I want to stay friends. This is a cash business. Very well. Lend me 50 cents. Come on up. Oh! Junior, you're not out of the cash register. Now pick it up and put it back. I'll give it to you out of my own pocket. I only got five dollars. Oh, thanks. Two hamburgers, please. Here you are, Mom. <sighs> Thanks. Here's your money. Thank you. And there's your change. Oh, here's the 50 cents I borrowed. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Now we're even. Come on, Bab. That'll leave us plenty for the picture show. Bye, dear. Thanks, Peg. Much obliged for the trade. Hey, you see, son? Now, that's the way to do business. You got the business all right. What do you mean? That was your five bucks. What are you talking about? I got the... Five out of my... Yeah. Peg! Peg, come back! Let's stay friends! Well, don't just stand there. Gather it up in pegs. C. One, two, three, four, five dollars and twenty-five, fifty, sixty, seventy-five cents. With three bucks out for expenses, that leaves us a clear profit of, um... 275. That's right. Not bad, huh, Peg? You'd have made five times that much at the plant. Where do we really get rolling? I may quit the plant and give the stand all my time. Riley, don't you dare. Come in. Oh, good evening, Ms. Riley. I just thought I'd stop on the way home and see how Riley was. I'm all choked up. My chest is killing me. Well, why aren't you in bed? Well, you can't sell hamburgers in bed, you... you... Huh? <laughs> well, I might as well tell you the truth, Hawkins. I'm in a thriving business for myself now. Oh, so that's it. I thought there was something fishy about your being sick. Riley, you told me you had the day off. He phoned me and told me he was coming down with double pneumonia. Oh, Riley. I got other business interests now, Hawkins. You can dock me for today. I already have, and you be at work tomorrow, or you don't need to come back at all. Now, just a minute. You can't talk to a prosperous business executive like that. Riley! Daddy! boy, partner! I don't care what kind of an executive you are. You punch in tomorrow morning, or you're through. Okay. If that's going to be your attitude, you can accept my resignation. Resignation refused. You're fired! <laughs> Well, I guess that's telling him, huh, Peg? Now see what you've done. You've lost your job. So what? Now don't you worry, Peg. Now I can give all my time to the stand and really build up the business. But what'll happen to us in the meantime? There's food, clothes, and payments on the house. Gee, Peg, ain't you got no faith in me at all? It isn't a question of faith. It's, it's necessity. Go after Mr. Hawkins. Apologize to him. Get your job back. Be sensible, Riley. Nothing doing. He needs me. He'll come crawling back. I don't know, Pop. He didn't sound much like crawling to me. Well, I ain't crawling to him. I got my pride, you know. But how can we live? We can't eat pride. We don't have to. We'll eat hamburgers. <laughs> Son, how's business? It ain't bouncing. What's all that junk? New ideas, Junior. That's the way to get ahead in business. I got an idea for a new hamburger that'll stagger the industry. Well, a hamburger's just a hamburger, Pop. I wouldn't mess around with it. Look, Junior, I'll do the thinking around here. Now, you get a bun. We'll start rehearsing until we get it right. Here we go in a gale of horseradish. <laughs> Well, since you put it that way, Mrs. Riley, I 
I might take him back. Thank you, Mr. Hawkins. On probation. He'll be all right. Tell him to check in Monday morning. And just for once to be on time. I'll see to it. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you didn't mention my coming here. Mr. Riley's a very proud man. I wonder what about. Now, Junior, are you sure you know how to make that new hamburger I invented, just in case I ain't here? Sure. Just slap everything in the joint on it. Ah, here comes Gillis. Put out a toothpick. That's right. He'll be the first to try a Riley burger. Maybe the last. Hello, Ryle. Hiya, Junior. How's business? Terrible. Junior, your mouth is all full of mustard. Business is booming, Gillis. What'll it be? Give me a hamburger. Just plain, no trimmings. Gillis, you got a treat coming. You're gonna sink your fangs into a Riley burger. Bun. Bun. Nothing fancy, Ryle. Just plain. Lettuce. Lettuce. <laughs> I like just meat. Ketchup. Ketchup. Mustard. Mustard. I just want a plain hunk of meat, Ryle. Onion. Onion. Onion gives me heartburn. I don't want it. Mayonnaise. <laughs> I just want a hamburger. Please. Piccadilly. It's Piccadilly. Peanut butter. <laughs> I'm not trying for an ulcer, Ryle. I just want a hamburger. Hamburger. Pick it off the top and give it to me. Nuts. Nuts. <laughs> That's it. Nuts. So long, Ryle. See, I told you. Now we lost a customer. Who cares about Gillis? I'll eat it myself. Well, I confess I'm almost at the end of my rope. I just can't argue anymore. Well, we've got to do something, Mother. When your father gets an idea, he's as stubborn as an army mule. But you said Mr. Hawkins would take him back at the plant. The trick is to get him to go back to the plant. It's okay, Mom. He's snoring. Poor Daddy. He wears himself out and nothing to show for it. Now, if only something would happen to make him see that he's just wasting his time. If he keeps losing customers with that goo he mixes up, he's going broke. Junior, that's it. What's it? If we could make him fail, then he'd have to go back to the plant. Ain't that kind of a dirty trick? Perhaps it is, but if it's the only way we can save your father from himself, then it's justified. But how could we make him fail? Well, suppose that stand across the street were to open up again with better food and better service. You mean run him out of business? I mean put him back in the business he belongs in. Oh, Mom, do you think we could? Well, if it's for his sake as well as ours, we could certainly try. I could run the stand. I could help. I'll go get some paper, Junior. We've got to plan this out. Okay, Mom. 
can use what money I've saved to rent the stand. A warm fire, your grandchild's smile, a cup of tea on a chilly afternoon. Simple things are better, so why does choosing a Medigap plan have to be so darn complicated? The answer is simple. It doesn't. Not when Medicare Fullest agents guide you step by step right to the plan that fits you best. Just go to MedicareFullest.com. It's really that simple. Was you, I wouldn't even answer him. My own son competing with me. It's like serpent's teeth. Yeah, and all aching. Where did they get the dough? Junior's got piggy banks stashed all over the place. If my Egbert did that to me, I'd bat his ears off. What am I gonna do to teach him a lesson, Gillis? Bankrupt him. Start a price war. Price war? Sure, give me that chalk. That'll fix him. Yeah, now watch them kids come running over here. Gillis, he's undercutting me. Oh, so he wants to fight, huh? We'll slaughter him. Watch this. Slaughter him? We'll fracture him. He's going down to seven. We'll go to five. But they cost more than that. War is war, Ryle. He's going to two. We'll go to one. He can't scare me. Let him top that. Look, Gillis. The kids are coming over here. What I tell you, Ryle, stick with me. Your hamburger's one cent a piece, mister? Well, uh, don't weaken, Ryle. That's right, kid. Give me a dozen. A dozen? You heard him. Here's the 12 cents. Nothing doing. I'm sold out. There's a law against false advertising, mister. He's right, Ryle. You better give them to him. Well, just to save trouble, how do you want them? Well done? We'll take them raw. Yeah, and we each want a dozen. Here comes a policeman, Ryle. I'll see you later. Now, wait a minute, Gillis. Wait, wait. Well, do we get them or don't we? Well, 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 what do you kids want with all them raw hamburgers? They're for Junior. We're working for him. What a revolting development this is! After all the years I spent bringing him up to do this to me... I wouldn't feel too badly, dear. You'll still have your job at the plant. My own kid's going against me. Hello, Daddy. Hiya, Pop. I ain't speaking to either one of you. Oh, Daddy. Gosh, Pop. That's my ultimatum. Now, wait a minute, dear. It wasn't their fault. The whole idea was mine. I wanted to show you what could really happen. You mean... you put them up to it? I backed them. My own wife? It was all for your own good, Daddy. For my own good? My own family runs me out of a prospering business. It wasn't prospering. All we've been eating are the hamburgers you couldn't sell. We're declaring you in, Pop. As a partner. You mean it? Sure, Daddy. A silent partner. Junior can run it after school while you're at the plant until we can sell it and get your money back. Sell it? Why, that business is worth a million dollars. With my brains in back of it, I got ideas that'll... See who that is, Junior. Okay, Pop. We'll serve hot soup, Dumplin'. You can cook it at home. 
Riley, don't start that again. Babs can be one of them car hops for the auto trip. I will not. Man to see you, Pop. You the fellow that owns that hamburger stand at the corner of 3rd and Maple? I did own it. I closed it up today permanent. Me and my son, Junior... You just closed in time to save yourself a fine. What for? Operating without a license. If you'd open tomorrow, it would have cost you a thousand dollars. Thousand dollars? You're a lucky guy. Good day. Did you think of that too, Peg? Don't be too angry with me. Angry with you? You saved me a thousand dollars. I ain't got. What about the new hamburger stand? I bought a license. I never thought of that either. Oh, you're a mechanic, dear. You, you help build planes. That's important to the world. Well, anybody can run a hamburger stand. You're right, Peg. Why should I slave over a hot stove, cooking hamburgers, boiling hot dogs, frying onions? I... <clears throat> you know something, Peg? What, dear? I'm a lousy cook. <laughs> Come here, Junior. I want you and Babs to remember one thing. All the brains in this family ain't stuffed in my head. Mm -hmm.